Hey everyone and welcome to Latter-day Divers. Just want to give you a quick context or some insight into why this general conference compilation is what it is. My name is Will Perez. This is where we dive into the words of ancient and modern prophets. So I've heard like often and growing up, well, the prophets and apostles don't talk like they used to. They are not as bold as they used to be. They used to come down harder. They used to be more blunt. And I've kind of like believed that in some ways, right? Like uh, we miss the President Packers of the world. And, and I love President Packer. And the brethren are soft now. And I've just been thinking and wondering to myself, is that true? And it was pointed out to me recently that an important part of the Latter-day Saint tradition is our love for plain speaking and, and blunt and bold ministry. You're not nearly as warm as you will be if you don't repent. Right, we read that Nephi glories in plainness. He says, I'm gonna speak plainly. That's how the Lord speaks. I love that in the book of Jacob, Sherem the Antichrist is accused of speaking with flattery. He's, he's given the power of the devil in his speech. And it's after he repents that he speaks plainly. So clearly there's something about being plain spoken that we attribute to divine authority and to truth. And we expect that of our prophets. Now we also know that it's not enough to speak powerfully. We read in 2 Nephi 33 that it's the power of the Holy Ghost that makes truth resonate with our hearts. So is it more important to speak powerfully or to speak with the power of the Holy Ghost? And do we sometimes mistake bluntness and harshness for plainness and truth? So all that to say is that we have this beautiful tradition, the scriptures back it up, that truth is spoken plainly. And so I just wanted to look for like, are LDS prophets speaking plainly? Can we still glory in plainness? What truth are they sharing? Or have they gone soft and we have changed in our prophetic approach? I know what I think. Um, as you watch these clips, there are, there's one clip from every a prophet and apostle who spoke this conference, a short one, six minutes total. And um, I would submit to you that prophets are still speaking truth in plainness. Um, sometimes very boldly, invitations that are hard enough as it is for me to, uh, to live up to. But more importantly, they are plainly testifying of Christ. So have the brethren gone soft? I would submit to you that they are still, just as ever, speaking truth powerfully and plainly by the power of the Holy Ghost. Maybe not powerfully and bluntly in the way of the world. And I, for one, am grateful for that distinction. What do you think? Let me know in the comments and enjoy the compilation. I bear solemn witness of the reality of eternal life and the need for us to be serious in our planning for it. That serious needs to exist when Christ comes because he needs to recognize us not as nominal members listed on a faded baptismal record, but as thoroughly committed, faithfully believing, covenant-keeping disciples. This is an urgent matter for all of us. I assure you that having the Spirit of the Lord's house in us changes us completely. No matter the outcome, all will be well because of the temple covenants. Today, I repeat a principle I previously have emphasized. Our homes should be the ultimate combination of both sacred time and holy place. As temples come closer to us in many places, a temple sacrifice we can offer is to seek holiness in the house of the Lord more frequently for many years, we have saved, planned, and sacrificed to come to the temple. Now, as circumstances permit, come even more often to the Lord in His holy house. The Lord's saving mercy is not dependent on lineage, education, economic status, or race. It is based on being one with Christ and His commandments. Worldly happiness, by contrast, does not last. It cannot. 
It is the nature of all earthly things to grow old, decay, wear out, or become stale. But godly joy is eternal, because God is eternal. Jesus Christ came to lift us out of the temple and replace corruption with incorruption. Only he has that power, and only his joy is perpetual. I promise that if we feast upon the words of Christ that lead to salvation, our prophet's words that guide and encourage us, and our own words that speak of who we are and what we hold dear, the powers of heaven will pour down upon us. The words of Christ will tell you all things what you should do. We are his children, and he is our God, and he expects us to speak with the tongue of angels by the power of the Holy Ghost. I invite you to live the doctrine of Christ repeatedly, iteratively, and intentionally, and help others on their way. I testify that the doctrine of Christ is central to Heavenly Father's plan. It is, after all, His doctrine. If you are prone to worry that you will never measure up, or that the loving reach of Christ's infinite atonement mercifully covers everyone else but not you, then you misunderstand. Infinite means infinite. Infinite covers you and those you love. Because covenants do not take a day off, to remove one's garments can be understood as a disclaimer of the covenant responsibilities and blessings to which they relate. In contrast, persons who wear their garments faithfully and keep their temple covenants continually affirm their role as disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. My invitation is to act now to secure your place as one who is valiant in the testimony of Jesus. As repentance may be needed, do not procrastinate the day of your repentance, lest in an hour when you think not, the summer shall be past and the harvest ended and your souls not saved. Be zealous in keeping your covenants with God. Do not be offended by the strictness of the word. Our ability to follow Jesus Christ depends upon our strength and power to live the first and second commandments with balance and equal devotion to both. I promise you, as you come worthily and prayerfully to His holy house, you will be armed with His power. His name will be upon you. His angels will have charge over you, and you will grow up in the blessing of the Holy Ghost. Here is my promise. Nothing will help you more to hold fast to the iron rod than worshiping in the temple as regularly as your circumstances permit. Nothing will protect you more as you encounter the world's mists of darkness. Nothing will bolster your testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ and His Atonement or help you understand God's magnificent plan more. Nothing will soothe your spirit more during times of pain. Nothing will open the heavens more. Nothing.